Hello everybody, I am Fuzzy Face and welcome to another episode of this Ferrari Challenge. We've got Monica and the Silverstone Grand Prix coming up today. We do have a vote, which is what we're going to jump into straight away. We are going to be voting on when, whether driver aids are going to be allowed, obviously. I don't want driver aids to be allowed here. I do have a bunch of votes. I'm only going to put one vote against it. Quite a few are already put their hat in the ring for voting for a couple are against it. it's going to be interesting to see which way it goes obviously if driver aids are allowed then driver talent doesn't mean as much in the game but we're already for six votes so look, it looks like this is going to get totally voted down here uh, eight votes to three we didn't needn't have wasted a vote there but we did it anyway just so we could uh reject driver aids being allowed it's cube wise let's just go and get this scouting facility built because we wanted that built it unlocks pretty much it unlocks a lot of these but we just wanted it to unlock Charles Leclerc here so I'm gonna go jump in and scout Charles Leclerc we've got four weeks left on the handling development center we are doing a simulator telemetry center and a wind tunnel all at once but the most important thing now getting into Monaco is that we've started the next round of upgrades so whereas Perez had the better car, Vettel is getting the new round of upgrades this time. So I've managed to do uh, the brakes so far. So now Vettel does have the best brakes in the car. Also got this rear wing built, which is just about, what is that, 20, 25 points better than the one that Perez has in his car. Obviously that's not good enough to go in the car. This time around, seven days after the race, it should be reliable enough. That won't obviously go into the car at Silverstone. So what I'm trying to do here, the reason why we gave Perez a better car, is just to see if we could catch him up. Obviously with the better car, Perez and Vettel are usually, I think in the last two qualifying sessions, they've been within one tenth of a second of each other. And now as we put each new part into Vettel's car, we can see how much each part improves the car performance wise over the next one so now that Vettel's got a part that's geez, oh, which one was he on this one he's got a part now that's rated about 56 better than the one that he had so we're going to see what sort of improvement that makes over the car we'll be able to tell what sort of improvement that makes over the car because we'll be able to see how far Vettel is now back in front of Sergio Perez in qualifying we don't have any sponsorships coming due let's just have a look at GP2 racing engineering 20 points clear here. Jensen Button is in third at the moment in the driver's standings. Norman Nato is still in first, although he's tied in first place with Aitken. Both on 20 points. We've got Felipe Massa in the Russian time. Sauber lagging behind a little bit. Prima still struggling with Antonio Giovinazzi and Lance Stroll. Nick DeVries in the other art car struggling as well. Art do have the strongest car here. And in GP3, we've got Gunther. And Rossi battling out at the top here with Sergei Sorokin, who's dropped to GP3 here with status GP. And Rossi and Sergei tied pretty much here. Rossi does have one win to his name. Sorokin has not yet to post a win here. Second, a fifth, a fifteenth, and a third for Sorokin. He's got a dumb trait as well. I don't know why he's got a dumb trait. Seems a little weird. Rossi, meanwhile, aggressive pay driver, rally champion investment portfolio. He's only, he can only get to three and a bit stars. But he's got a first, a 16th, a second, and an 8th as Alexander Rossi. I don't think there's anyone else here that's dropped too far. We've got PK here in the VAR. Done 11th, 11th, one podium. Um, Callum Illett struggling in the van. Amersfoort. Matsushita dropped down to the Genza here. To drop in from R. He did pretty well in the R car last season, although he's now dropped to GP3 and he's only got a 14th, a 10th, a 19th and a 12th. I think, I don't know how good Jenza is in this game. Actually the third best rated car, so he's performing a little bit poorly in this Jenza car. Obviously Gunther is winning the championship at the moment. We well, might as well go ahead and scout him as well, just to see what he's got. But we're going to jump into Monaco now. Actually, we've got a day to skip. I don't think anything's going to happen. Nope, nothing's going to happen there. So we're going to jump into Monaco now. I'm going to run practice and the qualifying session. And we'll come back when we're going through the grid for the race at Monaco. So here we go with the grid for Monaco. As we can see, Vettel now has almost three tenths of a, three tenths of a second over Perez now that Vettel has the better brakes in his car. 
Perez still does have the better engine, gearbox, front wing, suspension, rear wing. Obviously, that'll change for Silverstone as well, where Vettel should have the better rear wing. Possibly, he almost, he might have, might just have enough time to get him the better front wing there as well. But as we go down the grid, Lewis Hamilton is in third, Daniel Ricciardo in fourth in the other Red Bull, Carlos Sainz in fifth, Max Verstappen rounding out the third row of the grid in sixth in the other Red Bull, Nico Rosberg and Valtteri Bottas as usual in seventh and eighth in the Williams, and then obviously we'll have Force India trailing them in ninth and tenth, like usual. After them, we've got the Toro roster of Julian Palmer, Kevin Magnussen in the Renault in 12th, Fernando Alonso in the McLaren in 13th, Roman Grosjean in the other Toro roster in 14th, Pascal Verlein doing pretty decent in the Manor in 15th, Ocon in the other Manor doing decent as well in 16th, Kvyat in the house in 17th, Gutierrez in the other house in 18th, and then as usual, at the back of the grid, back to normal, we've got Carmen Jorda, Rafael Marciano rounding out the grid in the Renault and the McLaren respectively. Marciano still really struggling in this McLaren. But we're going to get to this Monaco Grand Prix now. We're going to see what it's like. We do still have the uh, some of the similarities here. This is more like a big roundabout that we go around here on this track. But we're away pretty decently there. And it looks like Perez has got past Vettel again. Just like he did in the last race in Hockenheim. And once again, Vettel is behind Hamilton. And it looks like he's going to go behind Saints as well here. That's what cost him the race in the last uh, in Hockenheim. And it looks like Hamilton's battling with Perez here as well. Obviously, we know that both Mercedes really push their engine from the start of the race. They do really like to burn through a lot of fuel. And as we can see, Saints is actually in front of Hamilton at the moment as well. Hamilton's actually got to try and conserve some tyres here. We're going to try and get the temperatures up here, which should allow us to get back into... Should be, allow us to be a little bit quicker if we can get those tyre temperatures up into the middle of that gauge. Into the middle of that gauge there. Vettel, meanwhile, has managed to find his way past Hamilton here. Saints is still really pushing his car. Are we going to turn down the fuel here, just as we usually do? Just wait for Saints to turn down his. Uh, just wait for Saints to turn down his engine. Perez, meanwhile, we're not, we don't seem to be getting the same sort of boost here as we usually do. Whether that's just because our car, there's not as much difference on the Monaco track. I don't know, or whether it's just because we got Perez in front. I think we're going to start gaining some time now. It's yeah, no, it's turn the engine back up and back down. I think it's whilst they push the car and we run in, run in high mode that the Mercedes can pretty much keep up with. Obviously, they can't do that for the whole race. And as soon as the Mercedes start turning their engine down, if we've got a car behind them, then we turn our engine back up, which should allow us to pass them. Obviously, it took Vettel a long time last race to get past Hamilton. And uh, Vettel's allowed Hamilton pass there. And we're going to have to try something different here. We've got the engine in overtake mode at the moment. And Vettel is still really struggling here against these two Mercedes. Still having a lot of issues getting past them. Obviously there's not a lot of straight in this track. There's not a lot of long straights apart from this little section of the track. That's about as the longest straight that we have. The rest of the course, there's not much overtaking, just like in uh, the real Monaco track. We're going to have to try and recover some of this now. We can't just keep going like this with, with Vettel. Obviously, is the temperature really, yeah, the temperature's really low, so we're really struggling to get heat into these tyres today. We're going to have to go neutral, otherwise we're going to burn through these tyres, although we are going to go ultra soft, super soft, ultra soft in this race. We're going to do two stops. But Perez, whilst Vettel has been stuck behind Hamilton and Saints, Perez has managed to get himself quite a commanding lead here. Vettel, meanwhile, still struggling to overtake. I'm going to have to sort of try and wait until we hit the pits to do this. Whether we can get the jump on these cars. What is Hamilton's tyre like? Hamilton's got a lot of... More, well, not a, a lot of more... Try and get these words out right. Hamilton has got a little bit more tyre over Vettel. Saints, meanwhile, has gone through his pretty rapidly. And Vettel has actually crashed. Vettel has actually crashed. Vettel has actually crashed here. Right, so Vettel... It, did Vettel crash here last... No, he didn't. No, it was later on in the season where we had the crashes. That's going to give the Mercedes time a catch up here. We're going to go low, back up. We're going to get this second pit stop in for free now. 
We're going to go super soft for the middle stint. We're going to get it in for free, sort of. Although it's not really free because it's going to give the Mercedes a lot of time. Well, it's going to give them a real chance to catch up here. As we can see, Perez was almost 22 seconds in front of the Mercedes. He's going to allow the Mercedes onto the back of us here. But we're going to get in and out of the pits before they even get to the pits. And as the safety car is out, we're just going to skip ahead. Now we'll come back when the safety car is going in. And we'll get on with the last two thirds of this Monaco Grand Prix from there. So we're about to get back racing here. As we can see, Hamilton has dropped to fifth. That's because the Mercedes double stacked in the pits, which has allowed Ricardo and Rosberg to get past him. We hit the line now. We're back racing. Uh, Mercedes. No, Ricardo's actually managed to get past Saints as well, whereas Hamilton's managed to get past Rosberg and Saints pretty easily there. So Hamilton's now battling with Ricardo. Ricardo should be. No, Saints has just got past Hamilton there. We just saw Saints get back past Hamilton. So this, if Perez can go on to win this race, he was 14 points behind, I believe, in the driver's standings. This will now put him 11 points ahead if he can go ahead and win this race. We're going to be able to put out a pretty good distance over Ricardo here because the Red Bull doesn't push their car in overtakers mode as much as the Mercedes does. As we can see, Saints and Hamilton have both got their cars in overtake mode, although luckily they are stuck behind Ricardo at the moment. We're starting to pull out a nice little gap here that we don't have to worry. It's going to take a lot of work to get these tyres right back into the temperature because it's really cold at Monaco. It's 11 degrees and it's going to stay that way for the entire race. It's going to be pretty impossible to get these tyre temperatures up. Luckily, all the computer cars will be struggling as well with that. They are on quicker tyres as well and we're still managing to keep a decent gap ahead of them here. Uh, the Mercedes have had to turn down their engines and already going down to low mode. So they're going to start falling behind Ricardo here. We're starting to lap a few cars. Did, uh, did Jordan come into the pits again? Has she made two pit stops? No. Is she just that slow? It's crazy that we managed to catch her after a couple of laps after the safety car came in. Anyway, Hamilton is still in fourth behind Saints at the moment. We've got Rosberg. Verstappen at 6, we've got the other Williams with Bottas in 7, Funkenberg is back in 8th, Reikkonen in ninth. the Force India is seeming to fare a little bit better this time out, although as we know, I've had a look, what I did, I just saw the game down here a little bit, what I did is during the last, uh, between the last two episodes, I applied for the job at Force India because it was available since they're doing so poorly, and they haven't been able to get Reikkonen's car up to scratch reliability wise Hunkenberg's car is there at 100% pretty much but I don't know whether it's because we so because our Ferrari car is so far ahead that the other cars are desperately trying to play catch up with us that they're aggressively seeking upgrades and that is forcing them to build a ton of new parts which they can't which they can't then get reliable enough for race time I don't know whether that's the reason that a lot of the other cars have had reliability problems but Perez now is lapping Marciano in the McLaren. We've got about 10 laps left now coming up. I think we should have. Yeah, that's what we had. And now we've got, yeah, we've got 10 laps going now. Still lapping more cars. We're going to hit the pits this lap. What have we got left? Nine laps. Is that just enough to do the ultra soft till the end of the race? It's really hard to get temperature into these tyres. Even going in push mode, we're not even able to put hardly any temperature in the tyres. We're going to have to go ultra soft though till the end. We might as well. We've got 27 seconds back to Verstappen. All the other cars are already starting to make their pits, so they already have done. The Mercedes are still in the pits. Are they fixing their car? Can we, can we go to Hamilton here? Hamilton's in the pit lane. It doesn't say how long his pit stop is. But he's in the pits for a hell of a long time here. I don't know what's happening with him. Both Mercedes just parked in the pits here. Uh, Perez comes in and out. And there goes Hamilton. So I don't know whether he is still having engine problems or something. Because a lot of his pit stops for Hamilton seem to take a long time. And they seem to bring Saints in at the same time. For some unforeseen reason. Which has now put the Mercedes all the way back here. Down the grid. Behind Hunkenberg, Rosberg, who have made two stops. Behind Toro Rosso, who have also made two stops. So it's going to be another really poor race for uh, Mercedes here. Whereas Perez now is just comfortably trundling along in front of Bottas here. He still has to make another pit stop. Uh, we don't want to push this tyre too much. It's going to fall down here. 
but it will just about get to the end of the race, hopefully. Maybe we can try to set a nice quick lap here. We'll go in overtake mode for a bit because we do have plenty of fuel. What we don't want is Perez to crash out of this race. <laughs> we don't want him to do what Vettel did. He crashed out on this corner, did Vettel. Possibly trying a little bit too hard to try and get back up the order because he got stuck behind Hamilton and Saints. But Perez now goes quickest in the first sector. Quicker in the second sector. It looks like he's about to do the fastest lap of the race here. He does it in a 108.1. Fastest lap of the race. And that's about it. That's about it. That's about all the extra fuel burnt up now. So we're now 26 seconds and gaining in front of Ricardo. The Williams having a pretty good race here. Now since because of Mercedes. Little uh, mistake. Hamilton is back up into 11th. Saints is still struggling all the way down here in 15th. Hamilton is going to get into the points because Magnussen does have to make a pit stop. Can he crack, catch Grosjean? He's about 8 seconds behind there at the moment. Uh, has Raikkonen had problems as well? It looks like Raikkonen's had his usual problems as well. He's all the way back down here in 16th. So let's just get back to Perez here. We don't have many laps to go. He's slowing down a little bit. We might have to go back into medium in a minute because high mode is... I don't know how much it used it up anymore because it did make some updates to what the fuel did in the last patch. So we actually burn more fuel than we did before now running in high mode. Whereas last season when we were playing the game in high mode, it wasn't actually using any fuel over and above what you should use per lap last season. Whereas now running in high mode it actually burns off a little bit of extra fuel so we're gonna have to go back to medium here for a couple of laps we've got no troubles here we're now 32 seconds about in front of ricardo rosberg's still there hamilton is now is up into ninth he's gonna score a few points that's because uh someone else make a pit stop oh gross john came in do the pits as well uh it doesn't look like hamilton is even gonna be able to catch julian palmer he is quite a way behind the toro rosso Alonso has managed to get himself all the way up to 7th. Marcelo has improved a little bit up to 15th. Nothing else too out of the ordinary there. Perez, meanwhile, we've got one more lap after this. Just enough life in the tyre. Let's go conserve. We don't want this getting into uh, too low. Although we've got tons of time in front. We've got 55 seconds back to 3rd place. And counting. So, last lap now, Perez, a few final corners here for Perez. And then that's the end of the race, another win. Which will put him in front in the driver's standings since Vettel hasn't scored a single point today. There we go. Perez finishes the race. Ricardo on pretty worn soft tyres here is coming around for second place. And then we're going to get Rosberg for his first podium of the season, his first podium in the Williams car. And that is him lapping Carlos Saints as well, the man who replaced him at at Mercedes Saints having real problems with his car still and we've got Hunkenberg passing Bottas on the last straight here Hunkenberg gets an impressive fourth place there in the Force India then we round out with Bottas fifth Verstappen sixth Alonso seventh Palmer eighth Hamilton ninth and Kvyat rounds out the top ten scoring one point in the Toro Rosso so that's the end of the race there not many making extra pit stops anymore. I'm guessing most of the AI cars now have their first car pretty much up to scratch. Although Lewis Hamilton does still seem to be making some really poor pit stops. Whether he's having to come, it seems a little bit early for him having to come in to fix an engine or something else. That takes a long time. Scrutineering, we don't have any parts that are risky. I don't think anyone else does. No, we don't. So if we go to the driver's standings now, there we go. Sergio Perez, 11 points in front. Obviously, Vettel is still the favourite for the championship because he is going to start now getting the new upgraded parts. It's just whether it starts to crash out again. He made a few mistakes last season in that he crashed and he hit Raikkonen, costing himself... Well, it didn't cost himself the championship because he won the championship. He won the driver's championship. It cost us the constructors last season his mistakes. We would have won the constructors comfortably last season if it wasn't for those mistakes Sergio Perez now has another morale boost Schumacher is about three and a half Schumacher is still getting the practice sessions here Perez doesn't do the practice sessions at Schumacher in the car just so we can get him improved here he's still a long way behind he's still a pretty decent driver he's 
pretty average for Formula 1 at the moment. He's rated a lot better than some of the ones that are a little bit lower down. Obviously, he's rated a lot better than Carmen Jordan in the Renault. 3.3 uh, million there we get in, in uh, sponsorship money. Right, so we're here at the start of the Silverstone Grand Prix now. As you can see in the car, we've managed to build a new rear wing. So Vestal now has, as well as having the best brakes in the car, it now has the best rear wing in the car. We also completed the build of the front wing. We've managed to get reliable enough that I'm willing to put it in the car for this race. It's a tiny little bit, a bit improved over the one that Perez has. So a little bit more comparable in the front wing region of the car. So last time out, I think uh, Vettel was about a quarter of a second quicker in qualifying than Perez. So we'll see whether Vettel actually improves that now that he's got a better rear wing and front wing on the car. See if he can improve to about half a second, I would expect, over what Perez can do in his Ferrari. So we're going to jump into practice now, run qualifying, and we'll come back again when it's time to go through the grid for the Silverstone Grand Prix, and we'll take things from there. So here we go with the grid for Silverstone. As usual, Vettel has pole. Although he is only a tiny margin in front of Sergio Perez, I was expecting Vettel to be a little bit quicker than he has been in recent races or to have more of a gap over Sergio Perez now that he has a better rear wing and the better front wing as well as the brakes. And I didn't look at the track layout before. Maybe Silverstone is more suited to the engine and gearbox, which is what Perez still does have as a better part over Sebastian Vettel. So maybe that's why Perez is a little bit closer. What this race needs from Vettel is for him to have actually a decent start for once. It's cost him in the last two races that he's made two really bad starts in that he got stuck behind Hamilton two races ago. Last time out in Monaco, obviously he got stuck behind both Mercedes. Obviously ended up crashing, which has cost him the lead in the championship. Anyway, we'll get on to the rest of the grid. Lewis Hamilton in third, Daniel Ricciardo fourth. In fifth, we've got Carlos Sainz, Max Verstappen in sixth as usual. Then we'll probably have the two Williams again as usual. Ne no, we don't. We have Nico Hulkenberg in eighth place. Uh, we've got Nico Rosberg in seventh. Valtteri Bossos pushed out to ninth. Kimi Raikkonen in the Force India in tenth. Jolene Palmer in the Toro Rosso in eleventh. Alonso in the McLaren in 12th, Roman Grosjean in the other Toro Rosso in 13th, Kevin Magnussen in the Renault in 14th, Verline in 15th, the house of Daniel Kvyat in 16th, Ocon 17th, Jordan a little bit higher than usual in 18th, Marciano not on the back of the grid this time in his McLaren, Haas this time gets uh, Esteban Gutierrez should I say in the house gets the uh, last place on the grid this time all the way down in 20th. It's going to be interesting to see what we can still do in this race, whether Mercedes are going to start catching up at some point. Obviously, we're not aggressively chasing upgrades at this moment. We're just sort of incrementally upgrading the car slowly just to see what sort of performance differences it makes between each car. Obviously, the rear wing, front wing brakes hasn't made a massive leap forward in performance as much as a engine or gearbox was. And there we see Perez managing to get past Vettel pretty easily up the inside. They're both going to get close to each other. Hopefully they, we don't have a Raikkonen and Vettel situation from last season. And who is that? That's Lewis Hamilton actually managing to chase down Vettel there. Obviously, as we know, the Mercedes really like to push their car from the off. They really like to go in overtake mode. It's really what they like to do. But as we can see, we can get 8 laps out of a super soft tyre, we can get 10, so we're going to try one stop this on a super soft and a soft, that's going to be our strategy for this race. We're just going to sit back here with Vettel, we're not going to really push overtake mode here, we're going to try and stay as close to Hamilton as we can. The last few races going down to medium and then going back up to high, it hasn't worked out as much for us as it did in the first couple of races. But the Mercedes still really burning through fuel here. Overtake mode, since it's turned down. Hamilton has now turned down. Hamilton is still pretty close to Perez here. So it looks like the Mercedes are starting to make a couple of upgrades to their own car. We will see by the end of the race, although it has cost them reliability wise chasing those upgrades. But here we go. As we know that Hamilton has turned down, we can now pull back out in front. We do really need to get Perez past here. We don't want him being held up too much longer. But overtake mode will cost a lot here. We do need Vettel to come into the pits first. So let's just see. If we push the tyres. 
and we push the push the engine. Whether we can catch Hamilton down the straight, and there we go, we got flying past. That's got us back to where we need to be. We're going to run both these cars in push and medium. No, we're going to turn down the tyres in both cars as well. We're both still pretty even tyre-wise. We're just going to see who we want in first when it gets to the first round of pit stops. Obviously, there's not enough distance between them that we can bring them in on the same lap. But Hamilton is doing pretty good at keeping up with both our Ferraris this time. Saints is falling back. But he's only six seconds behind, so I don't know whether it's just this track, whether it's just a Silverstone track, but Mercedes are keeping up a lot, a lot better than they usually do here. So Perez is out in front of him, still pushing that. No, Hamilton is pushing. Does he keep trying to push his car? He keeps pushing his engine. Maybe that's why he keeps having a lot of engine problems. So we're going to think about bringing one of these cars in first. Who are we going to bring in first? I'm going to give Perez the first. Yeah, we'll give Perez the first pit stop. So we're going to have to conserve with Vettel. Maybe even going to backup mode here. So Perez is going to get the first pit stop. We're going to go for the soft. 12 laps remaining. We're a little bit early on the pit stop here, aren't we? We're a tiny little bit early. But we're going to have to split these pit stops. Perez is going to come after, after coming first, and we're going to have to go medium. Because we do need to, uh, we have to be careful since Hamilton is actually managing to keep up with us this time. So Perez can come in early for the medium, he can push that out of the pits then. He can go back into push and high mode. Whereas Vettel is going to try here, we're going to try, we're going to go overtake mode, we're going to burn up a lot of fuel. Just see whether Vettel can get the jump on Perez here. Because he's got 10 laps to go, he's going to be on the quicker tyre, is Vettel. So that is possibly going to give him the, well it is going to give him the advantage over Perez. Whereas uh, Perez, we're going to try to get a little bit of heat in this tyre before we turn it down to neutral. He's got a lot of fuel to burn though as well. Here goes, Vettel's going to come into the pits. He's got about 21 seconds. Is that going to be enough to get out in front? We're going to have to go push and medium for the fuel because Vettel does need to try to recover some here. And there we go, Perez just out in front. So it didn't quite work out. Well, it did work out for Vettel. He seemed to catch up a little bit. And he's on the quicker tie now. It's just a matter of whether he can actually overtake here. He's actually managing to gain on Perez, even though Perez is using a higher fuel mode. So once Perez needs to turn down, Vettel should have the advantage pretty much at that point, so... Did Hamilton have another really long pit stop there as well? Hamilton has had, had another really long pit stop. I don't know what is up with the Mercedes. Why they keep having Hamilton take a real long time in the pits. Whether it's because they push their engine mode in overtake mode and it's doing something to the engine. There's something really strange going on with the Mercedes cars. I'm not quite sure what it is. But Vettel is now under a second behind here. Although we can't push these tyres too long because we do need them to get to the end of the race. Yeah, we're going to go medium, neutral. We'll just put both cars into neutral mode. Just see what happens there. Vettel is still gaining. So it looks like Vettel could get the lead at some point during this race. It's just a matter of whether he can actually get past Perez. As we've seen, Vettel has had a little bit of problems overtaking. In the last couple of races, he's struggled to get past the Mercedes, even though he's in a lot stronger car. And as I say that, he tries to dive up the inside there, but can't carry the momentum into the straight. But now gets it back. Vettel gets out into first on the 12th lap. He's probably going to start pulling away, but they're still battling with each other here. Bro, they have about the similar tyre left here, but Perez does have a lot that he can actually go back up into high mode here. We're just going to let our two drivers race, although Vettel on the soft tyre now is starting to pull away. Will Perez be able to keep up in overtake mode? He can keep up in overtake mode just about. We're not going to risk that, we'll just go high mode here. Because Vettel's going to regain his fuel and be able to go in high mode himself in a little bit. Perez is now gaining, and is he staying about 9 tenths behind? He's gaining really slowly, so let's just go down the rest of the field here quickly. 
Ricardo third, Verstappen, so we got both Red Bulls uh, third and fourth, and Rosberg in the Williams doing pretty well again, Hamilton six, he's doing a little better than he has been doing recently, obviously that's still not great for him, then we got the Force India, we've got Saints in the other Mercedes, we've got Bottas in the Williams, Verline up with the Manor up in the points again, although he's got a problem with his car which is going to cost him once again, uh, Palmer, Gross, John, both in the Toro Rossos. Uh, Kvyat, what's Kvyat in? Oh, it's totally gone out of my head what car Kvyat's in. <laughs> It'll come to me in a second. Uh, we got Magnussen in the Renault. Ocken in the Manor, Gutierrez in the Haas, Marciano, Raikkonen. Jordan all the way at the back in the Renault. So Vettel now, he's going to start pulling away, is he? Is Vettel going to start pulling away soon? He possibly should do soon because we can go back up into high mode with Vettel now. Right up until the end of the race, we've only got a couple of laps left here. We're going to have our first and second. We're back into, uh, back into normality here after Vettel crashed out in the last race. Although it's pretty close between these two cars. It's going to be interesting next race because we're going to be able to put... What did I start building? It was the gearbox. So Vettel is going to be there or thereabouts with a gearbox comparable to the one that Perez has got. I'm not quite, I can't remember whether it was, it was slightly behind, but we can obviously, we can get in front of Perez's by working on it in the factory, in that we can get the max start of it up. But the base start with it was pretty much equal to the gearbox that Perez has. We've only got a couple of laps here. We've got tons of life in the tyre. We should have enough in the fuel tank to just do what we're doing at the moment. Uh, Hamilton is challenging Rosberg here. Hamilton desperately trying to get back up into somewhere respectable here. He's going to try and get past his former teammate in the Williams. Is he going to be able to do that? We'll stick with it just till we get to the straight. Although Hamilton is really struggling there. He's okay. <laughs> Gutierrez is trying to get back past him. Obviously Hamilton has lapped Gutierrez. Hamilton too far back from Rosberg there. Vettel setting a quickest first sector. Slows down a little bit in the second sector as he gets held up by back markers a little bit. But here he goes. He's coming round to the finish line. Back to winning ways for Sebastian Vettel. Perez not that far behind in second. Ricardo's going to get the other podium spot here. Verstappen doing a lot better than he has been doing recently. Verstappen seems to have got over his reliability issues. Hamilton, meanwhile, still taking a long time on those pit stops. He did manage to somehow get past Rosberg on that final lap. We've got Hunkerberg in the Force India. Saints in the other Mercedes. Problems with his car as well. Bottas, no problems with his car coming in ninth. And Verline actually managed to squeak through. Here he comes. He's the only car left out on track. Everyone else has finished because they've been lapped. There goes Verline. Up into the points for Pascal Verline. Palmer just outside in the Toro Rosso. Can't remember what car Kvyat's in. Is he the other Haas driver? I'm guessing he, yeah, he must be the other Haas driver. Totally lost what team he's driving for there. So Vettel first, Perez second. Lifetime is we did a 119.2 with Vettel as the quickest lap. No one else really anywhere near other than Lewis Hamilton a 119.9. So even though it seems like the Mercedes are keeping up, they still have some real reliability problems some for some reason. That means Hamilton, when he comes into the pits, he's staying in the pits for a hell of a long time. I don't know the reasoning. There's no way that we can check. But there we go, 25 and 18 points. That should get Vettel within four points now of Sergio Perez. It's really close between our two drivers. Daniel Ricciardo has a pretty comfortable gap back to Lewis Hamilton, who is really struggling this season in fourth. We've got Valtteri Bottas in fifth. And Nico Rosberg, the Williams, both doing really well this season. The other Mercedes are Carlos Saints, all the way back down here in ninth, behind a force India. The Red Bull of Max Verstappen in seventh. Alonso, up into the top half of the table. That's pretty decent from him in this really poor McLaren, as we see the other McLaren all the way down here in 15th. And the only drivers not to score any points this season are Cam and Jordan, Esteban Gutierrez. And if we look at this, Kimi Raikkonen, who's been having a lot of trouble with his force India, all the way in 18th there. Obviously, he was he, his poor performances last season in the Ferrari, as well as Vettel's mistakes later on, cost us the championship last season. It's a shame I see him really struggling here. But that's the way it goes. We are now 182 points in the lead over Red Bull. Red Bull now managing to pull out a little bit of a gap over Mercedes as well. Mercedes really struggling in that they are only three points ahead of the Williams car. And then there's a big long gap there back to Toro Rosso. Force India 
battle with Toro Rosso for fifth place. McLaren also in that little grouping of teams. Renault a little bit further back. Obviously, they're really struggling. They possibly could be up there as well. But obviously, they do have Cam and Jorda in their second car, which is really costing them this season. Manor looks safe. Haas have finally scored a point at some point. Danny Kvyat must have scored a point at some point. But I don't think they've got any real hope of catching Manor before the end of the season. Uh, Pascal Verlaine did really well in that race. But there we go. Everyone's still really happy. Perez has nearly got his relationship with his mechanic all the way up to the top. He's over three quarters done. I don't know. I'm, uh, Perez has somehow become a rival with Valtteri Bottas. So they wouldn't drive for the same team. So I guess that rules Perez joining Williams when we possibly let go of him at the end of the season. Because Schumacher's catching up pretty well here with Perez. In that he might be able to get that second seat next season. 3.4 million just about into the bank. Gives us the money to work on the upgrades that we want. Next time out we've got our home Grand Prix of Monza. Plus Spa. So it's going to be a nice episode next time. Meta wins tight. Qualifying car condition update. Perez. He's... Uh, his rivalry with Valtteri Bottas and Vettel wins the Silverstone Grand Prix. We've got the new gearbox being built. That should be done in time for the... Well, it will be done in time for the next race. Just whether we can get the reliability of that up enough for it to actually get in the car of Sebastian Vettel. So then it will be interesting to see whether that does make a massive difference. Obviously, the brakes, the front wing, the rear wing haven't made that much of a dis difference. Obviously, it didn't in Silverstone where the engine and suspension... Uh, real crucial parts but the rear wing is crucial as well but we didn't see that much of a difference in qualifying just 0 0.037 of a gap between Vettel and Perez in qualifying but next time out we will get to see hopefully whether the gearbox makes well we won't get to see it because it'll either go in, in Monza or it will go in definitely for Spa so we won't get to see whether the gearbox does make a massive difference to the performance of Sebastian Vettel during the races but that is it for this episode thank you everybody for subscribing commenting and liking my videos in the past if you're not already subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below but until next time i will see you down the road in monza for the italian grand prix and the belgian grand prix as well and i didn't look at the track layout before maybe silverstone is more suited to the engine and gearbox which is what perez still does have as a better part over sebastian vettel so maybe that's why perez is a little bit closer what this race needs from vettel is for him to have actually a decent start for once it's cost him in the last two races that he's made two really bad starts in that he got stuck behind hamilton two races ago last time out in monaco obviously he got stuck behind both mercedes obviously ended up crashing which has cost him the lead in the championship Anyway, we'll get on to the rest of the grid. Lewis Hamilton in third, Daniel Ricciardo fourth. In fifth, we've got Carlos Sainz. Max Verstappen in sixth, as usual. Then we'll probably have the two Williams again, as usual. Ne no, we don't. We have Nico Hulkenberg in eighth place. Today. We've got Nico Rosberg in seventh. Valtteri Bossos pushed out to ninth. Kimi Raikkonen in the Force India in tenth. Jolin Palmer in the Toro Rosso in eleventh. Alonso in the McLaren in 12th. Roman Grosjean in the other Toro Rosso in 13th. Kevin Magnussen in the Renault in 14th. Verline in 15th, the house of Daniel Kvyat in 16th, Ocon 17th, Jorda a little bit higher than usual in 18th, Marciano not on the back of the grid this time in his McLaren, Haas this time gets uh, Esteban Gutierrez should I say in the Haas, gets the uh, last place on the grid this time all the way down in 20th. It's going to be interesting to see what we can still do in this race, whether Mercedes are going to start catching up at some point. Obviously, we're not aggressively chasing upgrades at this moment. We're just sort of incrementally upgrading the car slowly just to see what sort of performance differences it makes between each car. Obviously, the rear wing, front wing brakes hasn't made a massive leap forward in performance as much as a engine or gearbox was. And there we see Perez managing to get past Vettel pretty easily up the inside. They're both going to get close to each other. Hopefully they, we don't have a Raikkonen and Vettel situation from last season. And who is that? That's Lewis Hamilton actually managing to chase down Vettel there. Obviously, as we know, the Mercedes really like to push their car from the off. They really like to go in overtake mode. It's really what they like to do. But as we can see, we can get 8 laps out of a super soft tyre. We can get 10. So we're going to try one stop this on a super soft and a soft. That's going to be our strategy for this race. 
We're just going to sit back here with Vettel. We're not going to really push over Tate mode here. We're going to try and stay as close to Hamilton as we can. The last few races going down to medium and then going back up to high. It hasn't worked out as much for us as it did in the first couple of races. But the Mercedes still really burning through fuel here. Overtake mode. Saints has turned down. Hamilton has now turned down. Hamilton is still pretty close to Perez here. So it looks like the Mercedes are starting to make a couple of upgrades to their own car. We will see by the end of the race. Although they momentum into the straight but now gets it back. Vettel gets out into first on the 12th lap. He's probably going to start pulling away, but they're still battling with each other here. Bro, they have about the similar tyre left here, but Perez does have a lot that he can actually go back up into high mode here. We're just going to let our two drivers race, although Vettel on the soft tyre now is starting to pull away. Will Perez be able to keep up in overtake mode? He can keep up in overtake mode just about. We're not going to risk that. We'll just go high mode here. Because Vettel's going to regain his fuel and be able to go in high mode himself in a little bit. Perez is now gaining. And is he staying about nine tenths behind? He's gaining really slowly. So let's just go right down the rest of the field here quickly. Ricardo third. Verstappen. So we've got both Red Bulls uh, third and fourth. And Rosberg in the Williams. Doing pretty well again. Hamilton six. He's doing a little better than he has been doing recently. Obviously, that's still not great for him. Then we've got the Force India. We've got Saints in the other Mercedes. We've got Bottas in the Williams. Verline up with the Manor up in the points again. Although he's got a problem with his car, which is going to cost him once again. Uh, Palmer, Gross, John, both in the Toro Rossos. Uh, Kvyat, what's Kvyat in? Oh, it's totally gone out of my head what car Kvyat's in. <laughs> It'll come to me in a second. Uh, we've got Magnussen in the Renault. Ocken in the Manor. Gutierrez in the Haas. Marciano, Raikkonen. Jordan all the way at the back in the Renault. So Vettel now, he's going to start pulling away, is he? Is Vettel going to start pulling away soon? He possibly should do soon because we can go back up into high mode with Vettel now. Right up until the end of the race. We've only got a couple of laps left here. We're going to have our first and second. We're back into, uh, back into normality here after Vettel crashed out in the last race. Although it's pretty close between these two cars. It's going to be interesting next race because we're going to be able to put... What did I start building? It was the gearbox. So Vettel is going to be there or thereabouts with a gearbox comparable to the one that Perez has got. I'm not quite... I can't remember whether it was... It was slightly behind, but we can obviously... We can get in front of Perez's by working on it in the factory. In that we can get the max start of it up. But the base start with it was pretty much equal to the gearbox that Perez has. We've only got a couple of laps here. We've got tons of life in the tyre. We should have enough in the fuel tank to just do what we're doing at the moment. Uh, Hamilton is challenging Rosberg here. Hamilton desperately trying to get back up into somewhere respectable here. He's going to try and get past his former teammate in the Williams. Is he going to be able to do that? We'll stick with it just till we get to the straight. Although Hamilton is really struggling there. He's getting... Okay. <laughs> Gutierrez is trying to get pa uh, Perez comes in and out and there goes Hamilton so I don't know whether he is still having engine problems or something because a lot of his pit stops for Hamilton seem to take a long time and they seem to bring Saints in at the same time for some unforeseen reason which has now put the Mercedes all the way back here down the grid behind Hunkenberg Rosberg who have made two stops behind Toro Rosso who have also made two stops it's going to be another really poor race for uh, Mercedes here. Whereas Perez now is just comfortably trundling along in front of Bottas here. He still has to make another pit stop. Uh, we don't want to push this tyre too much. It's going to fall down here. But it should, will just about get to the end of the race, hopefully. Maybe we can try to set a nice quick lap here. We'll go in overtake mode for a bit because we do have plenty of fuel. What we don't want is Perez to crash out of this race. <laughs> We don't want him to do what Vettel did. He crashed out on this corner, did Vettel. Possibly trying a little bit too hard to try and get back up the order because he got stuck behind Hamilton and Saints. But Perez now goes quickest in the first sector. Quicker in the second sector. It looks like he's about to do the fastest lap of the race here. He does it in a 108.1. Fastest lap of the race. And that's about it. That's about it. That's about all the extra fuel burnt up now. So we're now 26 seconds and gaining in front of Ricardo. 
the Williams having a pretty good race here now since because of Mercedes little uh, mistake Hamilton is back up into 11th since he's still struggling all the way down here in 15th Hamilton is going to get into the points because Magnussen does have to make a pit stop can he crack catch Grosjean he's about eight seconds behind there at the moment uh, has Reichland had problems as well it looks like Reichland's had his usual problems as well he's all the way back down here in 16th so let's just get back to Perez here we don't have many laps to go he's slowing down a little bit we might have to go back into medium in a minute because high mode is I don't know how much it uses up anymore because it did make some updates to what the fuel did in the last patch so we actually burn more fuel than we did before now running in high mode whereas last season when we were playing the game in high mode it wasn't actually using any fuel over and above what you should use per lap last season whereas now running in high mode it actually burns off a little bit of extra fuel so we're gonna have to go back to medium here for a couple of laps we've got no troubles here we're now 32 seconds about in front of Ricardo Rosberg's still there. Hamilton now is up into ninth. He's going to score a few points. That's because uh, someone else make a pit stop. Oh, Gross John came in to the pits as well. Uh, it doesn't look like Hamilton is even going to be able to catch Julian Palmer. He is quite a way behind the Toro Rosso. Alonso has managed to get himself all the way to seventh. Might happen in seventh. Alonso up into the top half of the table. That's pretty decent from him in this really poor McLaren. As we see the other McLaren all the way down here in 15th. And the only drivers not to score any points this season are Cam and Jorda, Esteban Gutierrez. And if we look at this, Kimi Raikkonen, who's been having a lot of trouble with his Force India all the way in 18th there. Obviously, he was he, his poor performances last season in the Ferrari, as well as Vettel's mistakes later on, cost us the championship last season. It's a shame I see him really struggling here. But that's the way it goes. We are now 182 points in the lead over Red Bull. Red Bull now managing to pull out a little bit of a gap over Mercedes as well. Mercedes really struggling in that they are only three points ahead of the Williams car. And then there's a big long gap there back to Toro Rosso. Force India battle with Toro Rosso for fifth place. McLaren also in that little grouping of teams. Renault a little bit further back. Obviously they're really struggling. They possibly could be up there as well. But obviously they do have Cam and Jordan in their second car which is really costing them this season. Mana looks safe. Haas have finally scored a point some point Danny Kvyat must have scored a point at some point but I don't think they've got any real hope of catching Manor before the end of the season uh, Pascal Verlaine did really well in that race but there we go everyone's still really happy Perez has nearly got his relationship with his mechanic all the way up to the top he's over three quarters done I don't know. I, uh... Perez has somehow become a rival with Valtteri Bottas, so they wouldn't drive for the same team. So I guess that rules Perez joining Williams when we possibly let go of him at the end of the season because Schumacher's catching up pretty well here with Perez in that he might be able to get that second seat next season. 3.4 million just about into the bank gives us the money to work on the upgrades that we want. Next time out, we've got our home Grand Prix of Monza plus Bata, so it's going to be a nice episode next time. Better wins tight. Qualifying car condition update. Perez, his, uh, his rivalry with Valtteri Bottas and Vettel wins the Silverstone Grand Prix. We've got the new gearbox being built. That should be done in time for the... Well, it will be done in time for the next race. Just whether we can get the right reliability of that up enough for it to actually get in the car of Sebastian Vettel. So then it will be interesting to see whether that does make a massive difference. Obviously, the brakes, the front wing, the rear wing haven't made that much of a dis difference. Obviously, it didn't in Silverstone, where the engine and suspension are real crucial parts. But the rear wing is crucial as well. But we didn't see that much of a difference in qualifying. Just 0 0.037 of a gap between Vettel and Perez in qualifying. But next time out, we will get to see, hopefully, whether the gearbox makes... Well, we will get to see it, because it'll either go in in Monza or it will go in definitely for Spa. So we will get to see whether the gearbox does make a massive difference to the performance of Sebastian Vettel during the races but that hell of a long time I don't know the reasoning there's no way that we can check but there we go 25 and 18 points that should get Vettel within four points now of Sergio Perez it's really close between our two drivers 
Daniel Ricciardo has a pretty comfortable gap back to Lewis Hamilton, who is really struggling this season in fourth. We've got Valtteri Bottas in fifth, and Nico Rosberg. The Williams both doing really well this season. The other Mercedes are Carlos Sainz, all the way back down here in ninth, behind a Force India. The Red Bull of Max Verstappen in seventh. Alonso up into the top half of the table. That's pretty decent from him in this really poor McLaren, as we see the other McLaren all the way down here in 15th. And the only drivers not to score any points this season are Carmen Jorda, Esteban Gutierrez, and if we look at this, Kimi Raikkonen, who's been having a lot of trouble with his Force India all the way in 18th there. Obviously, he was he, his poor performances last season in the Ferrari, as well as Vettel's mistakes later on, cost us the championship last season. It's a shame I see him really struggling here. But that's the way it goes. We are now 182 points in the lead over Red Bull. Red Bull now managing to pull out a little bit of a gap over Mercedes as well. Mercedes really struggling in that they are only three points ahead of the Williams car. And then there's a big long gap there back to Toro Rosso. Force India battle with Toro Rosso for fifth place. McLaren also in that little grouping of teams. Renault a little bit further back. Obviously they're really struggling. They possibly could be up there as well. But obviously they do have Cam and Jordan in their second car which is really costing them this season. Mana looks safe. Haas have finally scored a point. At some point, Danny Kvyat must have scored a point at some point, but I don't think they've got any real hope of catching Manor before the end of the season. Uh, Pascal Verlaine did really well in that race. But there we go, everyone's still really happy. Perez has nearly got his relationship with his mechanic all the way up to the top, he's over three quarters done. I don't know. Perez has somehow become a rival with Valtteri Bottas, so they wouldn't drive for the same team. So I guess that rules Perez joining Williams when we possibly let go of him at the end of the season because Schumacher's catching up pretty well here with Perez in that he might be able to get that second seat next season. 3.4 million just about into the bank gives us the money to work on the upgrades that we want. Next time out, we've got our home Grand Prix of Monza plus Bata, so it's going to be a nice episode next time. Meta wins tight, qualifying car condition update, Perez, his, uh, his rivalry with Valtteri Bottas and Vettel wins the Silverstone Grand Prix. We've got the new gearbox being built, that should be done in time for the, well it will be done in time for the next race, just whether we can get the right reliability of that up enough for it to actually get in the car of Sebastian Vettel, so then it will be interesting to see whether that does make a massive difference. Obviously the brakes, the front wing, the rear wing haven't made that much of a dis difference. Obviously it didn't insult in front in the driver's standings since Vettel hasn't scored a single point today. There we go. Perez finishes the race. Ricardo on pretty worn soft tyres here is coming around for second place. And then we're going to get Rosberg for his first podium of the season. His first podium in the Williams car. And that is him lapping Carlos Saints as well. The man who replaced him at Mercedes. Saints having real problems with his car still. And we've got Hunkenberg passing Bottas on the last straight here. Hunkenberg gets an impressive fourth place there in the Force India. Then we round out with Bottas fifth, Verstappen sixth, Alonso seventh, Palmer eighth, Hamilton ninth, and Kvyat rounds out the top ten, scoring one point in the Toro Rosso. So that's the end of the race there. Not many making extra pit stops anymore. I'm guessing most of the AI cars now have their first car pretty much up to scratch. Although Lewis Hamilton does still seem to be making some really poor pit stops. Whether he's having to come, it seems a little bit early for him having to come in to fix an engine or something else. That takes a long time. Scrutineering, we don't have any parts that are risky. I don't think anyone else does. No, we don't. So if we go to the driver's standings now, there we go, Sergio Perez, 11 points in front. Obviously Vettel is still the favourite for the championship because he is going to start now getting the new upgraded parts. It's just whether it starts to crash out again. He made a few mistakes last season in that he crashed and he hit Raikkonen, costing himself, well it didn't cost himself the championship because he won the championship, he won the driver's championship. It cost us the constructors last season, his mistakes. We would have won the constructors comfortably last season if it wasn't for those mistakes. Sergio Perez now has another morale boost. Schumacher is about three and a half. Schumacher is still getting the practice sessions here. Perez doesn't do the practice sessions at Schumacher in the car just so we can get him improved here. He's still a long way behind. He's still a pretty decent driver. He's pretty average for Formula 1 at the moment. He's rated a lot better than some of the ones that are a little bit lower down. Obviously he's rated a lot better than Carmen Jordan in the Renault. 
Uh, 3.3 million there we get in, in uh, sponsorship money. Right, so we're here at the start of the Silverstone Grand Prix. Now, as you can see in the car, we've managed to build a new rear wing. So Vessel now has, as well as having the best brakes in the car, it now has the best rear wing in the car. We also completed the build of the front wing. We've managed to get reliable enough that I'm willing to put it in the car for this race. It's a tiny little bit, a bit improved over the one that Perez has, so they're a little bit more comparable in the front wing region of the car. So last time out, I think uh, Vettel was about a quarter of a second quicker in qualifying than Perez. So we'll see whether Vettel actually improves that now that he's got a better rear wing and front wing on the car. But um, get this scouting facility built because we wanted that built. It unlocks pretty much, it unlocks a lot of these, but we just wanted it to unlock Charles Leclerc here. So I'm going to go jump in and scout Charles Leclerc. We've got four weeks left on the Handling Development Centre. We are doing a simulator, telemetry centre and a wind tunnel all at once. But the most important thing now, getting into Monaco, is that we've started the next round of upgrades. So whereas Perez had the better car, Vettel is getting the new round of upgrades this time. So I've managed to do uh, the brakes so far. So now Vettel does have the best brakes in the car. Also got this rear wing built, which is just about, what is that, 20, 25 points better than the one that Perez has in his car. Obviously, that's not good enough to go in the car. This time around, seven days after the race, it should be reliable enough. That won't obviously go into the car at Silverstone. So what I'm trying to do here, the reason why we gave Perez a better car, is just to see if we could catch him up. Obviously, with the better car, Perez and Vettel... Are usually, I think in the last two qualifying sessions, they've been within one tenth of a second of each other. And now, as we put each new part into Vettel's car, we can see how much each part improves the car performance wise over the next one. So now that Vettel's got a part that's, geez, oh, which one was he on this one? He's got a part now that's rated about 56 better than the one that he had. So we're going to see what sort of improvement that makes over the car. We'll be able to tell what sort of improvement that makes over the car because we'll be able to see how far Vettel is now back in front of Sergio Perez in qualifying. We don't have any sponsorships coming due. Let's just have a look at GP2 Racing Engineering. 20 points clear here. Jensen Button is in third at the moment in the driver's standings. Norman Nato is still in first, although he's tied in first place with Aitken. Both on 20 points. We've got Felipe Massa in the Russian time. Sauber lagging behind a little bit. Prima still struggling with Antonio Giovinazzi and Lance Stroll. Nick DeVries in the other art car struggling as well. Art do have the strongest car here. And in GP3 we've got Gunther and Rossi battling out at the top here. With Sergei Sorokin who's dropped to GP3 here with status GP. And Rossi and Sergei tied pretty much here. Rossi does have one win to his name. Sorokin has not yet to post a win here. Second, a fifth, a fifteenth, and a third for Sorokin. He's got a dumb trait as well. I don't know why he's got a dumb trait. Seems a little weird. Rossi, meanwhile, aggressive pay driver, rally champion investment portfolio. He's only like, can only get to three and a bit stars. But he's got a first, a sixteenth, a second, and an eighth as Alexander Rossi. I don't think there's anyone else here that's dropped too far. We got PK here in the VAR. Done eleventh, eleventh, one podium. Um, Callum Illett struggling in the van. Amersfoort. And welcome to another episode of this Ferrari Challenge. We've got Monaco and the Silverstone Grand Prix coming up today. We do have a vote, which is what we're going to jump into straight away. We are going to be voting on when, whether driver aids are going to be allowed. Obviously, I don't want driver aids to be allowed here. I do have a bunch of votes. I'm only going to put one vote against it. Quite a few are already put their hat in the ring for voting for a couple are against it's going to be interesting to see which way it goes obviously if driver aids are allowed then driver talent doesn't mean as much in the game but we're already for six votes so look, it looks like this is going to get totally voted down here uh, eight votes to three we didn't needn't have wasted a vote there but we did it anyway just so we could uh, reject driver aids being allowed HQ wise, let's just go and get this scouting facility built because we wanted that built. It unlocks pretty much, it unlocks a lot of these, but we just wanted it to unlock Charles Leclerc here. So I'm going to go jump in and scout Charles Leclerc. We've got four weeks left on the Handling Development Centre. We are doing a simulator, telemetry centre, and a wind tunnel all at once. 
But the most important thing now, getting into Monaco, is that we've started the next round of upgrades. So whereas Perez had the better car, Vettel is getting the new round of upgrades this time. So I've managed to do uh, the brakes so far. So now Vettel does have the best brakes in the car. Also got this rear wing built, which is just about, what is that, 20, 25 points better than the one that Perez has in his car. Obviously that's not good enough to go in the car. This time around seven days after the race, it should be reliable enough. That won't obviously go into the car at Silverstone. So what I'm trying to do here, the reason why we gave Perez a better car, is just to see if we could catch him up. Obviously with the better car, Perez and Vettel are usually, I think in the last two qualifying sessions, they've been within one tenth of a second of each other. And now as we put each new part into Vettel's car, we can see how much each part improves the car performance wise over the next one so now that Vettel's got a part that's geez, oh, which one was he on this one he's got a part now that's rated about 56 better than the one that he had so we're going to see what sort of improvement that makes over the car we'll be able to tell what sort of improvement that makes over the car because we'll be able to see how far Vettel is now back in front of Sergio Perez in qualifying we don't have any sponsorships coming due let's just have a look at GP2 racing engineering 20 points clear here. Jensen Button is in third at the moment in the driver's standings. Norman Nato is still in first, although he's tied in first place with Aitken. Both on 20 points. We've got Felipe Massa in the Russian time. Sauber lagging behind a little bit. Prima still struggling with Antonio Giovinazzi and Lance Stroll. Nick DeVries in the other art car struggling as well. Art do another episode of this Ferrari challenge. We've got Monaco and the Silverstone Grand Prix is coming up today. We do have a vote, which is what we're going to jump into straight away. We are going to be voting on when, whether driver aids are going to be allowed, obviously. I don't want driver aids to be allowed here. I do have a bunch of votes. I'm only going to put one vote against it. Quite a few are already put their hat in the ring for voting for. A couple are against it. It's going to be interesting to see which way it goes. Obviously, if driver aids are allowed, then driver talent doesn't mean as much in the game. But we're already for six votes. So look, it looks like this is going to get totally voted down here. Uh, eight votes to three. We didn't needn't have wasted a vote there, but we did it anyway, just so we could uh, reject driver aids being allowed. Hits cube wise. Let's just go and get this scouting facility built because we wanted that built. It unlocks pretty much. It unlocks a lot of these, but we just wanted it to unlock Charles Leclerc here. So I'm going to go jump in and scout Charles Leclerc. We've got four weeks left on the Handling Development Centre. We are doing a simulator, telemetry centre and a wind tunnel all at once. But the most important thing now getting into Monaco is that we've started the next round of upgrades. So whereas Perez had the better car, Vettel is getting the new round of upgrades this time. So I've managed to do uh, the brakes so far. So now Vettel does have the best brakes in the car. Also got this rear wing built, which is just about, what is that, 20, 25 points better than the one that Perez has in his car. Obviously that's not good enough to go in the car. This time around seven days after the race, it should be reliable enough. That won't obviously go into the car at Silverstone. So what I'm trying to do here, the reason why we gave Perez a better car, is just to see if we could catch him up. Obviously with the better car, Perez and Vettel are usually, I think in the last two qualifying sessions, they've been within one tenth of a second of each other. And now as we put each new part into Vettel's car, we can see how much each part improves the car performance wise over the next one. So now that Vettel's got a part that's, geez, oh, which one was he on this one? He's got a part now that's rated about 56 better than the one that he had. So we're going to see what sort of improvement that makes over the car. We'll be able to tell what sort of improvement that makes over the car because we'll be able to see how far Vettel is now back in front of Sergio Perez in qualifying. We don't have any sponsorships coming due. Let's just have a look at GP2 Racing Engineering. 20 points clear here. Jensen Button is in third at the moment in the driver's standings. Norman Nato is still in first, although he's tied in first place with Aitken. Both on 20 points. We've got Felipe Massa in the Russian time. Sauber lagging behind a little bit. Prima still struggling with Antonio Giovinazzi and Lance Stroll. Nick DeVries in the other art car struggling as well. Art do have the strongest car here.